All right, so this is really the first video where I'm showing you a little more up close about um, kind of this gimbal that I've been working on. It's a, a very small gimbal designed for small lightweight cameras like the uh, GH4, Sony A7S, Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera, point and shoots, um, anything just kind of in the smaller range. Now, uh, Dave Dugdale from LearningDSLRVideo.com uh, referenced me a few times on one of his latest videos about a Nebula 4000 um, handheld gimbal. Now that gimbal um, is kind of a pistol grip style which is cool for the smaller cameras but if you're hoping to fly uh, a mirrorless like this or an A7S um, you're gonna be very limited to what you could do with that gimbal. Uh, you won't be able to use heavier lenses you gotta stick to some of the smaller pancakes. You won't be able to tilt very much on that gimbal um, backwards or uh, doing the low mode kind of stuff is gonna be very difficult Obviously, you can't really hook up a monitor to something like that, which is hugely helpful when you're shooting with um, a gimbal because you're moving the stabilizer around so much, you want to have uh, full access to the screen. Um, so anyways, the pistol grip stuff, I've seen it. Uh, I'm not completely sold on it for like these types of cameras, maybe for smaller ones, GoPros, great. Um, so I've been still working on something like this. Now, if you watch his video, you'll see how frustrating it was to kind of get it balanced and I've seen that on a lot of gimbals and having a toolless design is going to be uh, easier out on the field even if you're just zooming um, on this lens from 12 to 35 you're going to throw off your balance and having to redo that on the nebula is going to be ridiculous so um, a gimbal like what we're working on here is going to be a lot easier to get it balanced and tuned for a lot of different cameras um, and still be fairly compact. Now without going too deep into it looking at this gimbal it may look like there's some extra space available here where we could shrink it down more but honestly um, I just really going through my head there's not a lot of ways you could shrink this down and still let it do what you want it to do now number one you have an HDMI port here on the side now when you're using a pancake lens your balance point is going to be almost dead center to this motor here so if you're too close to this motor there's no way you can get an HDMI cable in there and I think that's hugely important so you have a minimum width to work with inside of this camera frame outside of that you have a minimum distance from this motor to the back because once you have your camera mounted and you tilt backwards you don't want this eyepiece to smash into the back of this motor here so you have that minimum uh, distance from this arm over here and that determines also the back width of this roll bar and this back width of the roll bar also determines the height of this pan bar up here at the top you notice how it just clears um, and that's so that you can fold the unit flat when you're traveling um, we've designed it so that this whole top unit here this bar can be removed very quickly it's just 15 millimeter quick release clamps this unit breaks down fits in a very small case very lightweight you can hold it for hours um, as well as going with 15 mil standard you can add uh, other mounts as well like a we have a 90 degree mount here which I use for adding uh, like a monitor on top so there's a lot of accessories that you could use to mount to 15 mil so that's the reason why we kind of went uh, with that anyways taking a quick look here I'm gonna show you guys how we go about balancing on this unit so first of all we've got a dedicated Manfrotto 577 on here dedicated that means if you go with this gimbal, you have to get one of these plates. There's no way around it. But it actually solves a lot of problems. Number one, we've designed this base plate so that it can be shifted left and right. The platform here slides across this slot. So now you have your left and right adjustment. The 577 also solves the problem of going forward and back adjusting your camera. So there's no tools required. You can slide your camera in and out. And you've got a quick release dedicated so you can get your camera off very quickly. Uh, a lot of people want that in a gimbal because they want to move their camera off when they're not using it. So having this dedicated Manfrotto and designing around it, we've solved several problems allowing you toolless adjustments right here at the camera base. So we're gonna add this camera right now. So it just slides in. Let's see if I can get this lined up. There you go. So what I want to do first is I'm just gonna lock this down and the first adjustment I'm gonna make here on, on this gimbal is uh, getting this to sit flat on its back. Okay, you notice that if I hold it this way, 
it's going to drop down. That's because there's more weight on the bottom here, so it's dropping towards the bottom. So what, all I have to do is loosen these thumb knobs here. So I'm just going to loosen this. I'm just going to lay it flat on its back, figure out a good balance point so that it doesn't fall over, which seems to be right there. Kind of snug that up a bit. And uh, so now it's no longer falling, falling back this way or this way. The next one I'm going to do is a tilt. Now you notice it's falling backwards, too much weight going to the back. I'm going to loosen this up and push the camera forward. So I'm just going to slide this and I'm going to do it until it's balanced and that looks pretty good right there. So we are almost there. It's a little bit bottom heavy now, so I'm going to go back and loosen this up. Figure out how to get it to sit flat on its back, which is like right there. There you go. I'm able to get that balanced pretty well. Now your roll bar is going to be stuck in the middle here. You notice that I am lined up uh, center so that my roll is not falling over, but the adjustment for the roll is down here. So if I loosen this up, and I slide this plate over a little bit, you'll notice that my roll is going to fall over. So really all it takes is loosening this up, sliding the unit over until you have good balance, which might be okay right there. And I'm just gonna tighten it up. I'm a little forward now, let me see. Slide this back. Okay, there you go. So now I have all of this set up here. Now, one of the last adjustments that you're going to do is your yaw, which is up here. So if I swing this over, you'll notice that I have a lot of weight in the back because the back is, is swinging towards the bottom, right? So if I raise this up, that's going down. So what that means is there's too much weight here. I need to move that weight towards the front. Really all you have to do is loosen it up here at the pan bar. And we're going to slide this forward a little bit. And we're going to tilt again. Still too much weight back there, so loosen it up, slide it forward. That's much better. All right. Now I'm just gonna make sure that every one of these knobs here is tightened up. And there you go. We have our camera balanced uh, completely toolless. Um, and once you have it set up, you don't really have to go through this process as much. But just to show you, um, if you were to zoom out on one of your lenses, you'll notice I'm throwing off my balance here, so now it's too front heavy. As that, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to loosen this up here, push this camera back until I can get it to sit flat, and then tighten it up. There you go. I've already rebalanced for this 12 to 35. Had that been on another gimbal where you require all those little Allen keys, uh, that would be a pain. So now, if I wanted to push back to 12. I'm back heavy, so I'm going to push it back forward again. And that's it. We are balanced. So you notice even on, on my roll, I can go uh, kind of at an angle here and it'll maintain that angle. All right, so there you go. You notice that I've got all my adjustments here. Um, I'm balanced on my roll. I'm balanced on my pitch. Um, I'm also balanced here on my yaw because this is not swinging around as much. Um, so that's kind of a quick look at what it's going to kind of be or work like. I'm actually working on a build process right now where I'm putting together one of these gimbals. This is actually um, a blacked out version right here which is just came in and I'm building this so um, it's going to look a lot different once it's assembled in black and uh, we mask up all the wires and stuff. So, um, But anyways. Let me uh, boot this up and show you guys uh, how stable it is.
All right, so again, this is just a prototype, but um, let me show you. System is on. Uh, I haven't finished tuning this, but you can see that the unit is balanced. Very stable. I got my follow modes on. But uh, that's it, and that's with the uh, 12 to 35. It works way better with even lighter cameras. Um, and this quick release here helps you get your camera on and off very quickly if you need to move it over to a tripod. Um, so that's a quick look at uh, how it's going to be to balance this unit once it's available. Uh, for more information about this stuff, hit me up on the blog, cheesycam.com.